and John at Topeka. They do a heck of a show. <laughs> Live from New York. What's wrong with you? Because you made fun of my friend. <laughs> Called him highfalutin. I'm sorry. I didn't buy the leather-bound editions. Five first men. things first. Day two. Back from vacation. Day two. Today, Russell Wilson excited for what's next. But is there a starting job available for him? Mm, maybe not. Ooh, uh, meanwhile, Dak addresses criticism of the Cowboys culture, and Brew in the meeting said, this is right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> and finally, a new segment in the vein of Mahomes Mountain. We put it to a vote. Mahomes Mountain NBA edition. Lost. Brew. But it didn't make it to the finals. <laughs> Oh, that's well done. That's well done. Uh, We're outvoted. We're going with King of the Hill. We, I won. I won at King of the Hill too. (laughs) I mean, you you won. (laughs) Thank you. A long time. (laughs) What's he talking? King of the Hill, it is. (laughs) Not even your segment, as I said. (laughs) What is he talking about? Okay, (laughs) you won. You You won won. the naming of your segment. I I was agnostic on the name, Brew. I'm glad your suggestion. I wanted Mahomes Bow and NBA (laughs) it is. Yeah, you lost. So that's the tease for a segment coming in an hour. (laughs) But we start with the fallout of Russ being officially cut by the Broncos. Denver will take an $85 million dead money hit over two years in the history of the NFL. Russ's contract is the first and fourth most dead money ever. Yeah. Quick tale of two cities, not in the book. I know you're so literary. <laughs> uh, Russ's career in Seattle, great. Two Super Bowls, one one. With the Broncos, not so much. Uh, although he played okay last year. Mm. Nick disagrees. Yeah. Uh, who does this look worse for, the whole situation, macro, Denver or Russ? I'll give a direct answer, but before I do, can we – we shouldn't have to start so negative. Oh. Can we talk about who it looks great for? Sure. Your old buddy Nick Wright. Classic <laughs> one. Not even a two. Just a, an a classic all-time one. classic one. It was a classic one. Immediately correct every step of the way. Almost like a, a, a classic zero. I, more Is correct. I, on not, the board? I, I, it might have been invented. I was more right than I thought I could have been. And so, I mean, it's on Russ. It was a two-year classic one. But to and now to go negative, like we have to go in sports TV. Yeah. I wanted to go positive. Uh, listen, it, it's bad for Denver. But because it happened almost simultaneous with a worse trade and worse contract with Deshaun Watson, I think it's kind of mitigated. And so wow. because – just in historically, I don't think people can say this is the worst trade. It's like, well, the Deshaun trade, they gave up more and paid him more, and they can't get rid of him. So because of that, I think it is clearly worse for Russ because, Brew, it's, it is a fall without an off-field scandal or an injury. Unlike I could I, – I, me, Dusty, Josh – all for like 20 minutes before the show, we're like, what is the comp for this? Cross sports, the best I could come up with was Kurt Warner, maybe. And Kurt did come back at the back, end, but, yeah. but Kurt also, he had multiple injuries that let, he had a, broke a hand, broke a wrist, broke a finger. Like, and so it was like that, that felt like it was But more, his run, as great as it was, wasn't as long as Russ. No, it wasn't I mean? as long. It was a higher peak, right. but shorter time. It, it, Josh brought up like maybe Russell Westbrook in the time from league MVP to like can't even play for the Lakers, but that just felt that more, more about le- fit yeah, I, than I it was the player. Yeah. So it is just it, David Duvall was what I came up with. Oh, and you have to go to golf <laughs> twenty years ago, and so can I throw the, one to you yeah. that I had written oh. down? Yeah, I wrote down Carson Wentz esque. But he, Carson Wentz, here's the thing: with I know that. he's never was at the no, height. but he also got his leg broken and ACL snapped. And maybe we can say it was going to go poorly, mm. but it was he was near. He's going to win league MVP. Gets his leg broken and is never the same player. And so RG3, we've seen those things. And we've seen scandal. Russ wasn't old enough for us to say, oh, nope, it was just age. And it w- and for it to be this bad, this quickly, and to where what it's going to cost him, because I don't know he's going to be a starter, Brew. And so I, my answer is going to be Russell Wilson. You you really got me thinking. I know. I'm trying spent a to lot like of time think about thinking about it. It's, it's hard it, to find. Yeah, it's hard right away. But I look. I'm glad you brought up Kurt Warner because 
I thought about that when Russ, you know, when they released him and yeah. now he's, you know, he re- released his statement. He has that. Ch- Kurt Warner was bad with yeah. the Giants. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it was like. It was wow. bad at the end of the Rams. Right. Yes. Right. Before and the then Giants. he then resurrected really himself in Giants. Arizona. Yeah. So I'm not saying he's going to lead a team to a Super Bowl like, like Kurt Warner did, but. I think this is an opportunity. Like, it's not – it doesn't have to be done for Russ. So, that's why I think it's worse for the Broncos. It's bad for both of them. Don't sure. get me wrong. And that includes Sean Payton. Because Sean Payton came in as the golden boy. And, of course, he's got time to – maybe they'll be very good next yeah. year or in the future. So, he can erase that. Mm-hmm. But right now, Sean Payton looked bad. Yeah. Their defense went from, like, solid, like 14th mm-hmm. in the league, to 27th. In the league. They gave up a 70 piece. He won seven games after saying, I'd be shocked if we don't make the playoffs in the preseason. And all of his gaffes in the media and the missteps and things like that. So I think it looks bad for everybody, but I'm going to focus more on the, the Broncos because remember, this also was new ownership. The yeah. Walton, you know, of Walmart, Rob yeah. Walton, and all that. Their first thing, I mean, I don't think they hired Hackett. Right, we, he was there before them. Sure, right, but they, right. they was giving him the deal. But yeah, but they came in, and I mean, before Russ gets off the plane, they they give him this huge extension. So first of all, they gave up all of this, you know, with the three yes. players, the five picks, two of them first round picks, and Seattle's made good on that. Devon Witherspoon was an uh, All Pro, yep. Pro Bowl cornerback, and they, they got an offensive lineman that starts for him in that, and then they made it worse by giving him this extension. And so this has to make you say, okay, how confident am I in our ownership? You know, um, they went out and, you know, paid Russ before they even saw him play for us at all, even in practice. And so, so I think there's that. And I think, Nick, like I said, Russ, wherever he goes, has a chance to I don't think he'll get back to what he was, but to play well. And like you mm-hmm. said, Wiles, he wasn't horrible last year. I, I think Nick, he's a I think I don't think he's an on-time quarterback. I think that's where the problems begin. I think he's more of a guy that's gonna scramble around and make plays, yeah. and he couldn't do that in Denver and he okay, but bad he, one of, okay, so but let's so a couple things. One one of the he couldn't do that his first year in Denver because he came in out of shape and then he refused to run. And his second year in Denver, he I and I think Sean Payton agrees with me, and I'm not saying I want to make it very clear. I know some people at Fox have real relationships with Sean Payton. I'm not one of them. I don't know him, so I mean, this is not coming from Sean at all. But I think he agrees with me given the sideline interactions and him benching Russ and all of that. Russ was playing a Russell Wilson selfish style of quarterback where he was not making the best plays. Instead, he was he was protecting that touchdown interception ratio. So folks would say things like this. Well, last year he wasn't that bad. You know, he only had one last touchdown. And Patrick Mahomes, look at the ratio. I watched every game he played. He was awful. He wasn't awful? as full. He was a bottom eight quarterback in football last year. That's I, I wouldn't say. Now, look, uh, I hear you. We've uh, talked about this before, and the numbers, you're right, they're, they're a bit deceiving. Because yeah. you look at the numbers, and you're like, right. top five it, or six in passer rating, top ten in touchdowns, it, I give you that. But I wouldn't say all. Okay, well, but I, they, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't nearly You know who would? Look. Sean Payton and the Broncos, who are giving him $85 million to leave with no other plan. With no that's contingency, that's part of why they look worse. Oh, well, too. well, you can. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Like, and I don't. It, I, I, I don't I, what is the play? No, and I understand your argument and my point that just because the Browns made an even worse decision, that probably is bad which logic. Which still like, could maybe. Which, and I guess you know, maybe that could turn right. around. But I, I think that I, I think Russ was so bad his first year in Denver mm-hmm. that people are now overstating his second year in Denver. They were a team that. Again, had Jared Stidham as a backup, still that's who they have as a backup, and they save no money next year by moving on from him. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, we're going to take a 39 and then a $46 million dead cap at the next two seasons because we have to get you out of here. Hmm. All right. In a letter to Bronco Country uh, posted on social media, Russ said, tough times don't last, but tough people do. And he was excited for what's next. So the question is this, what's next? Here's the Vegas odds for Russ's next spot. Steelers, Raiders, 
Falcons, Patriots, Vikings. Brew, caveat here is since Denver is paying his full salary, he can play for the minimum, which is $1.21 million. Denver would pay the rest. So where do you see Russ? Well, it, I had not seen the odds when I came up with my list, but Pittsburgh makes the most sense. And I, can't, I know the reports are saying they're not interested in Russ, Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield. Like, I don't know what the Steelers are doing. I used to be a huge Steelers fan as a mm-hmm. kid, like crazy Steelers really? fan. Really? As much as you're being, a Chiefs fan. Being from Iowa? From Cincinnati. And Cincinnati? Well, well, yeah, because yeah, my dad Orleans? liked them because Joe Gillum was a black quarterback <laughs> oh, that they had before Bradshaw. So my dad liked them. So I liked them because of my dad. But I love the Steelers. But if I were that big of a fan now, I would be ticked off. Like, what are they thinking? Were you going to do this with Kenny Pickett, who has 13 touchdowns in like 24 starts in his career? Like, if you, they want to be 9 and 8, 10 and 7 at best, and get walloped in the postseason every year? Like, and it doesn't have to be Russ. Uh, Russ would not be my number one of those four sure. guys I listed. But I'm just saying, if they're not going after the other three, go get Russell Wilson for freaking a million dollars. Maybe at worst, He's your starter, and you can pick it. I know pick is like 25, almost 26, but maybe pick it can learn a little something by yeah. sitting on the bench. I don't know, but I'm just saying I, he's better than what you would admit he's better than pick. Well, I, for the record, I think Pittsburgh, they like, they might like Mason Rudolph more than Kenny Pickett. I mean, yeah, but he, even again, again, no, no, no. I, listen, I wrote down Pittsburgh should do it, but they, I think these Vegas gonna be the Raiders are I think it's going to be the Raiders. Oh, I don't, I don't. If, if they, if they don't can't move up and get a quarterback Ooh. they want, I don't think it'll be the Raiders. What are they going to do at quarterback? I think the Ra- Raiders have played Russell Wilson four times the last two years. They do not. Anyone that has watched him closely doesn't want him. So I, the, it, it, and so. What's interesting about these odds is you have Minnesota and Atlanta on there. One of those is going to be eliminated because Kirk Cousins is going to be playing for one of them. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I know know they're both on there. If they lose Cousins, if they guys, I I, why not for a million? For yeah, okay, for a million bucks maybe. But then anyone that brings him in, he is competing for a job. So can I can I dig into that? Yeah. I know I said a million. He can play for a million. Mm-hmm. But there's a theory out there, and Florio did a lot of the digging on this, that he can play for as low as a million, but and this is Florio's theory, that then the franchise is not financially invested in him. So it's like, ah, a million bucks. Now, nah, you know what? We said start, start you, but we're going to sit you. Versus if you spend $20 million paying. $20 million. I'm just saying, if you pay <laughs> $20 million for a guy who was a starting quarterback is not a lot of money. But then you have to show some commitment yeah. to your promise to have him start. Where it's a million, it's like, oh, it's a million bucks. Yeah, nobody is Man. going to give him I a commitment. He, his, look, Russ I, has, and I've said this over the past two years, he should be humbled. He yeah. should be humbled. He shouldn't be thinking about any office. I'm sure he's not thinking about something like that. But he should go somewhere for a million dollars. A lot of people have tracked his start to his decline to when he started getting the huge money. Now, whether you believe in that or not, but I'm just saying right now, he should have the attitude he had as a rookie going to Seattle when nobody thought he was going to start and he had to prove himself. Mm -hmm. He's got to do it now. Uh, Okay. I don't think this is a matter of Russell Wilson getting back to his roots. He's not good anymore. So you're saying basically, politely, that he's washed. I don't. I, I'm. I, I'm actually not trying to be that polite. I've for two years I've been trying to tell everyone, and he is guys. He Nat Hackett couldn't make it through a season. Nat Hackett by but the end of his before the end of his first game as a head coach after an off season training camp preseason and three point eight NFL quarters, he was like hmm. Better chance to win this football game. This guy kicked the longest field goal of his life or (laughs) Russell Wilson pick up six yards. He's like, I've seen enough. Go with the kicker. Doesn't make it through the year. Sean Payton could have any job he wanted. Everyone's like, oh, Denver gave him a bunch of money. Guess what? Sean Payton was going to make a boatload of money anywhere. Goes there in part because he's like, I can fix that. I'm so calm I'm going to fix that. I'll tell USA Today the other coach was a bumbling fool because he couldn't fix it. Sean Payton. Three weeks, three months into the season, screaming at him on the sideline, and now get out of here. And then they bench him. Pete Pete Carroll. Carroll. These guys. I'm I'm here to tell you that he can't play, 
at a starting NFL level anymore. No, now, Nick, hold on, Nick. Yeah. Nick. What? And I and I agree with you because I watched those games too. Yes, I know. And I, I was like, he doesn't look good. They struggled mightily in the red zone. They, I'm shocked he had 26 touchdowns because when you watch them, it didn't look like they had 26 touchdowns. But my point is, he did have 26 touchdowns. And I think he had three rushings or sure. 29 or whatever. Eight interceptions. Yeah. 98 passer rating. I know it was only 205 yards a game, but I'm just saying – that's starter quality. Okay. Low well, starter. Okay. So give us the but, team. Well, it should be Pittsburgh. I think it'll be the Raiders if it's not Pittsburgh. Um, you think Antonio if, Pierce is like, it, my, I'm here. What else Raiders is he going to go with Aiden O'Connell? No, they, 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 they might draft, draft a guy. Somebody. They're going to okay, draft a if guy. they can move up and draft somebody, fine. I think New England will draft somebody. I think Washington will draft somebody. Minnesota, if they lose Cousins, I think that could be the place too. So I, I for, for the, I think for the whoever record, loses out on these other guys, I think the place that makes the most sense to bring him in and see could be New England, if because I I think New England's the most likely team to take advantage of the desperate Giants. So the Giants are at six. New England's at three. New England says, you're a franchise that hasn't done anything right in a decade. I would love to have a future pick from you. So you trade a six for three, and then the Patriots take, whether it's Joe Alt or Neighbors or, you know what I mean, a blue chip guy that's a Mm non-quarterback, and bring in Russ to compete with Mac Jones. Mac, we're not giving up on you, but we're bringing Mm -hmm. in competition. Let that play out. I I think it's a fresh start in New England to the point where it might hurt my guy Mac Jones. I don't think that sounds very similar to bringing Cam Newton. Yeah, it's it's, it's just exactly. similar. It's like you know what this guy used to be great. Yeah, might not still have it, but I'm sure with a great defense, a little bit of running, we can make it work. And uh, it's it feels like a band aid for the franchise but that needs to really can I have just, a full on real rebuild. quick? And I know we have, I'm glad you just said that. People seem were totally willing, correctly to say Cam Newton. Wash. I don't know why people are hesitant to say that about Russell Wilson. I think it's because we saw Cam just – he took so many hits that we knew it was because his body had betrayed you know, him. You know, and there's also that one – and Dusty, we used to break out the stat. Like, after that one hit, who was it? Oh, yeah, we know. it was. I think it was T.J. Watt. Yeah, T.J. Watt. There was like a line in the sand where, like, Cam's yeah. accuracy and sort of yeah. deep yeah. field passing. I listened to Russ and uh, did a podcast with Brandon yesterday – and he talked more about, and again, it wasn't a, a long conversation about the specific injuries, but he talked about his knee injury and lat injury more than I expected him to. He's like, oh, he talked about his finger injury. I was like, oh, you know what? The narrative around Russ was never like, hey, he was injured. So I wonder if, since no one really has a solution of why he has fallen off the cliff, maybe these, this lat injury is a little affecting him more than, Maybe the media is, is – Maybe. Saying, yeah, I mean, I can't speak to the, that. I, I, I know that the, that the, the line – instead of the line being T.J. Watt hitting Cam Newton, the line was Russell Wilson deciding I'm better than what we have in Seattle and I'm going to prove it to the world. And Pete Carroll yeah, saying, fair. okay, go ahead. And since then, it, it has not worked out that All way. All right, so Sean Payton looking for his next quarterback. Here's who Vegas has the odds. Stidham. Oh, God. Jarrett the Jaguars. Inject this list into my veins as a Chiefs fan. J.J. McCarthy. Oh, yeah. Trade up for it. Bruce Wolverines. Bo Nix. Oh, please. Hope he's there. Now, Jameis, Dark who had some success uh, with Sean Payton, Penix, <laughs> and then Gardner, who wins games. But oh, I don't God. think any of these guys are necessarily on Mahomes' level. Oh, Brew man. to you. All right, here's what they should do. Draft J.J. McCarthy. Oh, oh. please, please draft J.J. Oh, no. McCarthy. Draft he might not McCarthy. be there. You probably got to trade if up, you guys. Can get him. <laughs> and start, go sign Jameis Winston because you, you mocked. No. But a few play. years ago, if you remember, Jameis Winston was a Dark Horse MVP you candidate. That. You want to know what Under a good Sean teammate Payton. I am, bro? Give him Jameis Winston <laughs> with Sean you Payton. Call up some video. For, no. No, oh, I there built you go. this because okay. I knew this was going to be your pick. <laughs> so, I, I, the, again, ignore I mean, the, the yards, ignore really the yards America. But 14-3 to three touchdown interception. And that was a coming off the year where he yeah. threw 30 picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the passer rating his career high. Look, I, it's a stopgap. But I'm saying, draft JJ. 
sign yeah. Jameis. If, if Sean likes Jameis and he started him, so he must be okay with him. So let Jameis start and let J.J. sit for a year, and maybe he could become your QB of the future. All right. This is the good stuff, man. <laughs> this is just you, like Brew grew up. It, it is told the audience, and I and Brew's. I always believe Brew because he's probably the most honest person I've ever met. But also, I could feel the Steelers fandom coming out because Brew dropped the rare frickin', which we know <laughs> is is an f bomb, and so yeah, he only did that out of the frustration, out of his fandom. I grew up, as you guys know, a Chiefs fan. And I grew up watching the Broncos kick my team's ass all throughout the 90s. And now a few weeks ago, I, had to watch, I got to watch John Elway hand us the Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> and now we're doing a full screen of who's going to be the Broncos' next quarterback. And if they do overdraft one of these mediocre quarterbacks who's going to be the fourth or fifth quarterback drafted, guess what? They're not going to be like, oh, the cheat code, cheap quarterback on a rookie scale, not when you have the number eight cap it next year and the year after okay. in dead money from Russ. This type of mistake is a five-year mistake. The two years you already wasted and the next three getting out from under it. And the problem is once you're three years from now through with it, you know who's supposed to be the best players on your team? Those first-round picks that you didn't get to make who would be hitting their prime. So I don't think this is short-term recoverable. I don't think it matters who the Broncos' next quarterback is because he's not going to be very good next year. None of those guys that would be a star, but you're going to be having a quarterback star's cap hit, and you're down players. And so, yeah, I mean, please listen, you probably got to trade up to get J.J. McCarthy. I mean, Harbaugh says he's great, so maybe, maybe mortgage another first rounder. JJ. But Jameis is going to be the guy. I you bet. think so? I bet Jameis is on the Broncos. I yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, they were five and two, four and oh three. Oh my goodness! The Raider, Raiders, Jameis, go, this is your Raiders, go get Bo Nix. <laughs> Why <laughs> the Lakers don't care about their seed after a win against the, oh the my Thunder? God. Next on FS1, the Fox Sports Channel, on Sirius. That XM. was just delightful. <laughs> a tough Coming up tomorrow, it's the return of Nick's Tears, but this time basketball edition. We didn't rename this one. And you have a new outfit on. I don't have a new outfit on. Yeah, you used to wear that orange jacket for Tears. Tears promo. Oh, you're right. But that's, and that, yeah. yeah. yeah and Looks great. Right I like that. that. Thanks. Why is LeBron on there? The top 20 players? Lakers roll. <laughs> Tears is teams, buddy. Yeah, exactly. The, okay. <laughs> the Lakers, I mean, what place? Hey, Dusty, what place are the Lakers in? The, Tenth? Three Nine. games out of fifth. Ninth. How far away? Three games how, out how of far fifth. Away? Otherwise, no, it's how not far away from last. <laughs> Uh, Thunder shot 31% in the first well, half. Well, step on that graphic because they're in 10th, but this charlatan <laughs> doesn't point that exactly. out. Go ahead. Thunder didn't shoot well. LeBron goes for 19, 11, and 8. 80 at 24 and 12. Lake Show finished the season series uh, against OKC 3 and 1. Uh, Thunder now half a game back in the West. What did the Lakers prove to you last night, bro? Well,. I, I would go to the shoulders and dust them off, but I wasted that at the intro. <laughs> yeah, you probably should have. You know, held um, I should have. Because they proved exactly what I said yesterday, which is Denver's better. The Clippers have been in a swoon lately, but I think if they, you know, they're you better. Love them and you close. Love them. I mean, it's close, but I probably take them slightly over the Lakers. And that's it. Oh, they, 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 we're going to get to Anthony Davis' comments. But they own the Oklahoma City Thunder, who may very well end up as the number one seed. They are, and they got a bright future. Holmgren is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Obviously, SGA already is. And those other guys Jaylen are, Williams, are really yeah, good. they're good. Yeah. Like, they're going to be – they got a bright future. Future. All right? I would take the Lakers in a series over them, and I wouldn't even think twice. All right, I think they got too much experience. I think there's the LeBron factor of just his aura. The, these guys grew up idolizing LeBron James. Like, so they just proved that they own Oklahoma City. And they have been playing well lately. And the key, I think they've won 10 of their last 14. Yep. And D'Angelo Russell has been huge. Mm -hmm. All right, he's averaging 21 points over like the last two months. And the thing is, he's been when he's aggressive and playing this well. Last night he had 26. He kind of broke it open with a bunch of threes in the yeah. top of the fourth quarter. But AD is going to be great defensively every night, and offensively sometimes he's going to be awesome. Sometimes he's going to be okay. 
when D'Angelo is playing like this, it allows you to survive the okay nights because then Austin Reeves can step up as well. Right. And so, look, the Lakers are playing well. And as I said yesterday, Denver and the Clippers, and really Denver definitively, are the only two ahead of the Lakers. And if people didn't watch the game, it was not as close as the score suggests. No. It was 25-point lead for the Lakers midway through the fourth, and they pulled the starters. And listen, it was D'Lo. And LeBron, was, you know, there's a viral clip going around where D'Lo would hit back-to-back threes. He comes up for the possession, passes to LeBron, and LeBron angrily passes it back to him like, hey, t- take your heat fire. check, man. <laughs> and then he ta- D'Lo takes what I would consider, or you know, let me rephrase, what I'm certain Paul George would consider a bad shot. But he makes it, <laughs> and they call timeout, and D'Lo and LeBron celebrate. And LeBron is, in t- LeBron is very interesting in how he handles teammates. Because up until the trade deadline, if he thinks they can improve, right. he will make it very clear, uh, we should probably improve this spot. But the moment it is these are the guys I've got to run with, he will turn it to, I, I love, I've always loved this guy. <laughs> I am gassing him up, and I, we're going to need him, and I'm going to need him. And my concern and frustration with D'Lo is – in the playoffs, does he become unplayable because of the defensive side of the ball? But during this stretch, they're the number two offense. Yeah. And if the uh, you can't sustain an awful defensive player if he only raises your le- level of offense to you know above average. But if all of a sudden you're going to have an elite offense, then you can sustain right. some defensive weaknesses. But Wilds, this is why talking the Lakers is so tough because you're right, they're the nine seed. Mm-hmm. And now, again, it's jumbled, and they could be the they could be the six seed in a week and a half. The problem is, they, as well as they've been playing, the West, the whole they, West is playing well. Absolutely. So they can't even move up. But the reason I was saying it's tough is I, people like, ah, oh, you guys talk too much Lakers, LeBron, AD, they're the nine seed. But I agree with Brew. Aside from Denver, I like their chances against any team in the West. I'm not saying they're a head and shoulders right. favorite over those guys. Or that they're even definitely the, favorite in some of them. Absolutely. But I, the, there's only one team, Wilds, that mm. I think they can't beat in a series. And probably there's only one team that if the series were to start that I wouldn't – that I would pick over the Lakers in the West, I'm talking. That's and that's right. Denver. I don't, I don't trust Minnesota. No. I certainly don't trust OKC. <laughs> And a lot of it feels like Memphis last year. Like, Memphis is the two seed. Memphis this. It was like, okay. So, yesterday they were at home. They're not going to have home court advantage for the playoffs unless they somehow go on a crazy run and teams fall. They've won 12 games at home. They've won, and one of the games was at the Clippers, so I'm asterisking it. It's 12 with an asterisk. Oh, so they've won the 12 games at home or on the road? I'm sorry, they've won 12 games on the road. They've, they've won 12 on games the on the road. Okay. Teams with less wins than Lakers on the road. Here, this is the full list in the West. The Jazz, the Rockets, the Blazers, and the Spurs. So you think you're a con- I understand the LeBron factor. I understand Anthony Davis's defense, and maybe D'Angelo will get hot and stay hot. But do you think a team that has won 12 games on the road is all of a sudden going to go in, go and like be steal one or two games? We saw it a year ago, and the Warriors were even worse no, no, than the, the Warriors Lakers were way worse. What they went six? I, it's, yeah, I don't even that was say weird. It. that was such a weird. The, right, but yeah. they I mean they were worse than the Lakers on the road yeah. and that experience enabled them to go as far as they should have gone. You know, yeah. and they they beat Sacramento and, and, so, yeah. and also I got to I mean I'd have to look at it, but I was just trying to like rush through the math in my head cuz you just listed five teams with fewer road wins or yeah. four teams with fewer road wins. Well, if they're the 9 seed, there's only six teams with fewer overall wins than them in the West. Yeah, so they go to home. They but they no, have but struggled no, on the road. But, I no, I understand that, but I I guess my point is, are they a two-game road winning streak away, a two-game road winning streak away from being about what the typical 7-8 seed is on the road. You know what I mean? Mm. Where you're around five, a couple games under 500 on the road and then a, little, a couple games over 500 at home. Like, I, don't, I watch the Lakers a lot. I don't look at them as a team like the Warriors last year that was like, they can't win on the road. And even the Warriors, to Bruce credit, won a game seven on the road. All it took was Steph Curry's oh, but We points. saw it. We went to that Lakers-Knicks game. We've seen... 8% of their road wins, 9% of their road wins. <laughs> uh, last year, the Lakers started in the play and ended in the Western Conference Finals, where despite Darvin Ham okay. saying that he would be fine, trust him, ended up getting swept. Uh, here's AD on what I'm calling seed apathy. I like that. We don't really care what, you know, CBN. Uh, we proven that last year. 
you know, it doesn't matter. Um, I think this goes like with anyone. You know, you just try to get in, and then you know, playoffs is a different animal. So, um, you know, we don't look at it as you know we want to. We rather have this matchup than this matchup. You know, for us, it's just about getting in and uh, tackling each opponent from there. That's how they won the championship last year. Hold on a second. Got swept in Denver. <laughs> like, doesn't matter. You saw what happened last year. Uh, your reaction to that, bro? Well, I get where he's coming from because okay, if, okay. if they're in the seventh or eighth seed, they get OKC. Well, we don't know how it's yeah. going to play out, but they could get OKC or Minnesota. That I think a lot of people would pick the Lakers to win one of those series, right? Yeah. All right. And if you, I mean, right now Denver's third. They could end up number one. But my point, my point is this: I get where he's coming from because as Nick and I said, there only there's only one team out there that they it, think they 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 yeah. feel like has and, their number to and use you're, LeBron's turn. You're making fun of AD, but I think you actually 100% agree with him. I like I like the sort of confidence like we're not we'll take anybody take all comers, but also like no. I well, I'd want to get out of the play in. Well, the, that that I agree I with. I want to play extra games. The problem is that in a one and done against Stephen Stephen Clay could get hot, right? Uh Luka and Kyrie could get hot if that's who you play, and then next thing you know you're out. And so I, I hear you on that. You never want to be in a one-and-done situation in the NBA. And then you brought up D'Angelo Russell's defense. Yeah. Offensively, he's not the same in the playoffs. Sure. Last no. year goes oh, from 100%. 17 points to 13 points, in the, 17 in the regular season, 13 in the playoffs. Shooting goes way down in the playoffs. So that's the thing, too, with, with the Lakers. So, all right, so two quick points. One is it, I, the reason I said I think you'd agree with actually what he's saying is last year – the Lakers, no matter what their seed was, went literally as far as they could have gone. You think That's if they were right. the That's one, right. they with the Denver series would have gone different? Of course not. You know what I mean? No, they were yeah, going. They, and sure. they, they they were the seven. They basically inherited the path of the two and got as far as they could, which was facing Denver. And so I I, I get that piece of it. I think the. So the Lakers with LeBron have been in the play in twice, and both times they've won those games. But I think there is a big difference between it's not one and done if you're the seven or the eight. Right. But, I, but I, you do, know I, I agree with you. No, but I'm saying I agree with you guys. I don't think you're going to see a team be the nine or the ten and go on a deep postseason run, maybe as long as this play in thing exists. Mm -hmm. Because that would, what that really means is you have to win six out of nine. Right. You know what I mean? Super high leverage games yep. against two, the first two against teams as good as you and the next four against a team way better than you. But I, the Lakers' number one, if you, let me put it like this. If Denver's the three and it's the last game of the year and Denver's locked into the three and the Lakers are like, win and we're the six, lose and we're the seven. Perhaps. I would lose and have to play with that play. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so in that regard, I agree. Right. It's about avoiding Denver. Yeah, I agree. Why is that? They don't match up well with them. Nope. Say it. No, <laughs> you say it. No one's beating Denver in a seven-game series. You should get a tattoo about that. Uh, you know what? I thought never about it. Yeah, never a doubt. <laughs> Giannis warming up before uh, Bucks Clippers. No go. Some say wincing. Some Wiles, would say. Wow, I got to go with Nick on this. <laughs> Thank you. Bro, you, what happened you so the overstated show? this. What happened before the, the, the show? This is not Wiles is just, I hadn't seen it. Wiles is describing <laughs> it to me. Giannis just goes up for a jumper and collapses. I didn't say collapse. He, he says writhing, writhing, in pain. writhing in pain. Writhing means you're laying down, you, collapse, bro. and you just <laughs> can't get up. I mean, you he so wins. overstated. He right. didn't he say wince. He said <laughs> writhing. He said writhing in pain. Maybe I'm wrong. Dusty, can you do some research just real quick? Writhing Dusty, in Dusty, can you pull up the research on Achilles? Just put that in Wikipedia see what pops up. Okay. Is Achilles a big deal? <laughs> Go ahead. What? He's is not it turf riding. toe? Is it bigger he than turf toe? He's not riding. <laughs> Bucks ended up winning. Even yeah. though Giannis didn't play because his Achilles hurts. It's a big deal. No one's talking about it. What do you mean we're talking about, about it? It happened eight, You guys say it's not a big deal. All right. I'm going to go Galaxy. I have right a, I have a full ahead. screen. All right. Sorry. Doc, is, it's working now. Yeah. Go ahead. Doc. Um, uh, listen, obviously the Bucks are ruined if Giannis is seriously yeah, injured. There is Great a Obviously. Right. Right. Everybody knows that. Let's assume he's not seriously injured and that he's going to be okay. I think this could be awesome for them. Oh. You mean him being out him for a Him being out for a bit. Because they, Boston's 
the one seed. They could they could be the Wizards for a month and still end up being the one seed. Mm-hmm. They're that far clear of the field. They they need Dame to get his mojo back. Yes. Last night is a little, very Dameish. Right. Dame this year. We knew the Bucks defense was going to get worse, but Dame was going to lift their offense so much. Dame this year has been good. He yeah. hasn't been anything. He hasn't, well, been he hasn't been Dame. And so I think Dame being getting back to what he was in Portland a bit, except with bigger stakes, better teammates, and then having Giannis come in right for a playoff push could be good for them. So, so I think you Giannis think if he was out a couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, I think that actually Rest a little, yeah. Yeah, it could be good for them. There's some logic there for sure, but here's the thing. They still, I don't think, are fully comfortable with each other. All right, and, and that obviously won't get better if, if he's out for three weeks and then we're about to start the playoffs. Also, now, they clearly don't want to see Miami, and who knows where Miami will end up as Correct. a seed. But if, they, if, if Giannis is out and they go on a losing streak or, you know, a bad stretch – that could lower their seeding, and then it just makes your games tougher until you get to Boston in the championship of the conference, if that's where they go. So, um, obviously, Nick's right. It, it, without Giannis, they're done. But Doc, look, Doc, I got to give him credit. We know it's all about the playoffs. But the six-game win streak, mm-hmm. the defense since Doc has taken over has – it's not been – a little bit better, mediocre. They were bad before he got there, the 19th in the league. They've been fourth since, like, January well, don't 29th. Don't listen to Pat Bev tell it. He'll say he's he well, I, Dame look, talking I'm to gonna give Be- Well, I'm going to give Bev a little credit. Oh, yes. Bev is a gnat. I'm telling you, from a guy to play low-level college basketball, a guy like that that's just always bothering you and just aggressive and – it, it's it's bothersome. Wait, yeah. was that who you were? Or no, you at was times I was that. You were like Paul George in like the Pat Bev. <laughs> clip I, I wasn't a star, but yeah, I, I, but the yeah I, I had a little Pat Bev. Like yeah. that's what you. I mean that that he has helped your defense, yeah. no doubt. Okay. They, Doc is doing a good job. You want to so bring far. the deer back, Wilds? You know what? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I thought no one's beating Denver. Coming up next, the debut. Wow. Of King of the Hill. Well, our graphics going to get improve on it. It will. This is a new Does segment. Does that mean LeBron's on new. top? Well, I guess you'll have to find out. Top of Mahomes, right? Well, but so the thing is, Mahomes is the greatest player ever and still playing. LeBron is the greatest player ever and still playing, but Mahomes is still at his peak. But LeBron isn't. You understand what I mean? So I LeBron know. doesn't have to be at the top. I think we need a larger hill. I Time did, now I for after the headlines. The graphic will work. On it. Sponsored by Ram Trucks, they are built to serve. Dak Prescott said he was confident his deal would get done, and weighed in on criticism of the Cowboys' culture. Take a listen. The culture is high, honestly, and, and the culture is great from from my from my standpoint. And, and I say that in the sense is I actually don't know what all talk's been said, so I don't want to go into a I don't know good, bad, or whatever. I, I've heard some, but I can't. You guys know of anybody, I'm not the one listening, and I'm trying not to. So, uh, But my point is, yeah, that's something I've always bragged on and took pride in. So if there's questions of that, questions, concerns in that, um, I feel attacked. Okay, bro, you didn't, you didn't love that? I, I like his demeanor. Dak looked great, professional, all that was good. But this makes me want to pull out the tomato cans, oh, do the F cards, all of that. Why? Because the culture is the problem. <coughs> what was the culture of the uh, Patriots under Belichick? Do your job. Work. Do yeah. your job. Yeah. What's the Honestly. culture of the Chiefs? I think it's fun and confidence. I'm not sure. Yeah. Right? I mean, that, yeah. That, yeah. right? The, yeah. the culture That's of the Niners. Fun and bravado. Yeah. Intelligent play. Overcoming tough. mediocre. Oh, no. They, no they're, they're, but all of those teams, the, the culture is what? Based on what? The play football. Okay, sure. Football. The Cowboys' culture is drama. That's their culture because drama sells, and that's what Jerry Jones. For all as much as he wants to win a Super Bowl, of course he wants to win a Super Bowl. But what he wants more is the Cowboys on the talk shows, the jerseys selling, our guys out there, and and we're we're the talk of the league. Now, that's folks what he tomato wants. Tomato cans on the on right, the Yeah, he probably yeah. don't mind that yeah. because it sells. All right. <laughs> It, it, that is, until their culture becomes one of football, 
We are a football franchise. We're not a soap opera. We're not, you know, just uh, entertainment. We're not hard knocks on HBO all season. Until they do that, they're not going to win big. All right. So you, the, the, I don't know if it's quite a category two yet, but given how the Cowboys played in the playoffs, your season long statements about them have moved me a bit, right? <laughs> So I, it certainly appears that you're on the right side of this argument. With that said, what's Dak supposed to do? What's Dak supposed to do? Dak, because does Dak have a boss? If he does, it's really not Mike McCarthy as much as it's Jerry Jones. Right. And you, you I tell, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. When you're talking the culture, you you might have questions about Dak in big games, Dak in the playoffs, whatever. You don't think Dak's a part of the problem culture-wise? I would argue, I, or I shouldn't say you don't. I don't. I think Dak's part of the solution culture. Here's wise. what I'll say to you though. Remember, was it Demarcus Lawrence that came out and said we were exhausted by the time the playoff against Green Bay? Okay. Remember, sure. he said we were. He was saying. Not physically, I don't believe. Emotionally. They okay. were burnt out. But that, because for 17 weeks and beyond, it's, it's so much pressure yeah, on but the that's Cowboys. Not, right, I agree with all that. Because that's, Jerry creates the right, pressure. That's, I, that's my point, though. My point is, this is, this, uh, Dak is answering for it. And I think Dak instills a pretty positive culture from his leadership standpoint, what he can control. That's right. I don't think Dak isn't yeah, the one that, doing the podcast, right? I, I Dak is not, doing nothing wrong off the field. Yeah. He Dak, was at a he was, that was literally, yeah, yeah, I think a kid's cancer thing or some charity thing. I think Dak does, you know, he never, he's almost a boring quote most of the time, like Mahomes is, you know, I'm not going to give you any headlines. Right. In that regard. And so I guess the point, point I'm making is I think you can be correct, and I also empathize for Dak in this spot. Because here's what Dak can't do. Tell Jerry to change. He just can't. It's just, it's the only person in the franchise that he has no control over. That's right. And so it's a weird spot. It is it is the head of his company, the owner of his company, and it's like he knows Dax in there like, yeah, I I you know, and so he puts it on himself like I Yeah, I, 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 I don't feel have no attacked. problem with. Yeah. I mean, he has to you're right. This and he's trying to get a huge contract from him too. So yeah. I don't blame him. I, I wonder I, I maybe I'm just dreaming. But and, and I think when you're a player in that culture, it's probably hard for them to see it like I see it outside. No, but here's what – remember, this is what Micah said. Cut the extra stuff out. I just want people to lock in for 22 weeks. Seven months can change your life, and I am ready. So could – look, their leader, their player leaders, Dak, Micah, whoever else it is, could they talk to Jerry? And I mean, sit down with Jerry and say, look, just what Micah said, we want this to be about just football – you know, yeah. we, I mean, I get it. It's tough. I'm not saying you, I'm asking the question. I don't think can so. you go in I, and say, look, I don't think they can. <laughs> but I but I also think no, it's like, OK, you want to be on my podcast? Yeah. <laughs> um, right. That's the thing. Second, that's I think, best thing. <laughs> I think Mike is not the best messenger for it. I think Dak is like, you know what I mean? I but when Dak is sitting there like, listen, I try to set a good culture. He does. And I think yeah, he yeah, is saying I, without saying. In the locker room, the culture's good. And the, the, if Dak privately said, you know what, I don't want to hear the word Super Bowl until it's the Super Bowl. To, to who? But to Dak the team. says it too. That's the, what I'm saying. To the team. Oh, so, okay. We're going to hear about the Cowboys Super Bowl well, in Jerry August. Jerry brings it up. That's yeah, the problem. In August, we're like, you know, you gotta we're say Super that Bowl to bound. Jerry. After game one, it's like, that's one game down. We have 19 more to go till we get to the Super Bowl. This is who's king of the hill next. They will be saying that. Live from New York, it's the show that is debuting a brand new segment in approximately one minute. It's the second hour of First Things First today. Are the Giants done with Daniel Jones? Greg Jennings phones in to express (laughs) his displeasure. Meanwhile, is Bruce still riding? With his Clippers after losing to the Bucks, predictions week is next week, but Brew gives us a, a hint. But right now, I'm headed on a long journey. Oh, wow. Well, it's Tuesday at 4 o'clock, and although I'm obviously on Mahomes Mountain, most of the Mountaineers are resting in the offseason. Thus, we move towards another peak, 
In a new segment named after the most dominant player of this century, we present to you our new segment called King James of the Hill, AKA Mahomes Mountain NBA edition. <laughs> Wilds, great Excellent. introduction as always. Similar parameters, a maximum of 28 players on the mountain. That's the room for it, just like okay. the Mahomes Mountain. And it is a fluid list. This is not an all-time ranking, obviously, and it is not a definitive. This is, you know, this, one, two, three, four, five. It is like Mahomes Mountain. It's a rich tapestry of many factors. Because no one could have fallen off, because today is the first edition. Give you a little bonus, you know, at the bottom, guys who are, you know, at the bottom of the valley, just Ooh. missing out. Three number one picks at three different stages of their careers. All are right there and could be on the mountain as early as next week and maybe were on it as recently as a few weeks ago when we had, you know, our dry runs of, not the mountain, but pardon me, of King of the Hill. All right, bottom row, row seven. These guys all are excellent second options, but if any of them are your first option, you have a very clearly defined ceiling. So the only first options on there right now are Trey and Paolo. And Paolo one day, I think, could be an excellent first option. He's not quite there yet. And by the way, Orlando's going to be in the playoffs. Good job. Trey's a number one option. The Hawks are a little disappointing. But these are all really good players. These are all top 30 players right now in the league. Now to the top 20 guys, and this speaks to how deep the league is, that these guys are, you know, that we have got not quite really in the top 15, but these guys, Devin Booker, uh, Donovan Mitchell, two of the best scorers in the league, Jamal Murray, a champion number two, Dame trying to be that, De'Aaron Fox, the best player on a team that's going to be, you know, around 50 wins for the second straight year, and then uh, Tyrese Halliburton, who while the Pacers have cooled off a bit, Tyrese Halliburton was putting together a first-team All-NBA yes. caliber season early in the year. Now probably maybe more of a second-team All-NBA guy. Still an unbelievable year. All right. Now we're in real club superstar territory, Drew. Mm. You have, you know, back-to-back two-time finals MVPs in Katie and Kawhi. Anthony Davis, who's a champion. Anthony Edwards, who is the best player on a team fighting for a one seed. And shout-out to Jalen Brunson, go. who I liked when he was in Dallas. I loved him last year by the end of the year, and now I like him even more. I know, obviously, he had the scary injury, but he's going to be okay. These guys are all club superstar adjacent. By the way, shout out to Kawhi for his first healthy season in forever and really being excellent. Okay, so I'm a little, go to row four, I'm a little conflicted on one of these players, and that player is SGA because Mm -hmm. part of me feels like this is too low because he is having an MVP caliber yes. year. Part of me feels like this he's alongside LeBron in his 10 finals, Jimmy Butler in his two finals, Steph in his six finals appearances, and guys that have real pelts on the wall, and guys that we know are dominant postseason performers. Shea's never been above 500 for his career, for a season, and never been in the playoffs. But, like I said, it's fluid list. All right, now the real cream of the crop. First team All NBA caliber guys this season. Embiid is hurt, but he's going to be back. Luke is averaging 35 a night, and we're almost numb to it. And Tatum was tough. I, I'll be honest. You I come around on him though. I, well, I. It's not. Yeah, I mean, I could, could be higher, but I also, you know, I thought about LeBron in that spot. I thought about Jimmy in that spot. I thought about Steph in that spot. LeBron. I ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, well, we can discuss it more in a moment. Sorry, but, yeah, sorry. I'm just telling you I thought about it. As far as <laughs> if, if the, the who I trust over in the postseason, LeBron or Tatum, I still – or Jimmy or Tatum, that's a tough one. And so that – so but Tatum, that's where it is. These guys are all first-team All-NBA caliber if they were to play the games. And now to the part people are going to get mad at. So, listen – I tried to show Joker's respect by making the spot next to him vacant. I know everyone, just reveal the top row as well, please. I know everyone everyone thinks it's insane to not put Jokic at the top. Yeah. All I can be, do is be honest. I think Giannis is the best player in the league. I think, there, I think Jokic, I don't think there's anyone that deserves to be next to Jokic because I think he's clearly the next best guy. But I think Giannis, I understand last night he is the Achilles scare. He was writhing he in is pain. Having, yeah. He is having an underrated 
maybe best season of his career caliber performance this year. We can get into that more later. And so there it is. There is the king of the hill. I know Joker fans are going to be mad at me. But listen, second second place isn't that bad. That's what people in Brisbane tell me forever about the GOAT debate. It's not no problem to be in second place <laughs> on it. There's the first edition I, king of the hill. I would love to go off on Jokic. Mm-hmm. And I know oh. that's Wilds' thing. So I'm going to yeah. leave that for you. But Jokic is the best player in the league. I mean, okay. I, and, and with all due respect to Giannis, I don't want to act like he's chopped liver. But Jokic is the best player in the league. But I'm going to focus on Jimmy Butler. Hmm. I you think, think he's he should too be high. higher, too? No, I think he's too high. Oh, my God. I, look, I, I'm kind of looking at it as regular season right now because it's going to change every week. I get playoff Jimmy. I get big face coffee. I get the funky little hair doing piercings for the, the picture day and all that stuff. But Jimmy Butler's too high. I would take KD out. And I think it's left to right. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, no you're wrong. <laughs> I got my sources to on your there new committee, no too. To right. I would take Steph, SGA, KD, Kawhi, AD, uh, and for all his silliness, Anthony oh, Edwards over Jimmy Butler. Right now, I mean, we're talking about right now, playoff, right, right now, regular season. I would put them over Jimmy Butler. Well, and I, so I would pick any of those guys, but I'll throw Ant Edwards, switch him places with Butler or KD, whoever you want. You can put Butler where Brick, where uh, Jalen Brunson is. I covered his dad. Yeah, we I don't know. know. We don't but put him where Jalen is and move Jalen down. And I, look, I like Jalen. Wait, we're, but we're, I would put Donovan Mitchell. Where Jalen oh, is. Brew. I, I know I'm getting all I'm, I'm tearing to you to the But I got to say this before I go. Oh, we have more. Yeah. Wimby. Let's see. Oh. Wimby instead of Trey Young oh, on the bottom okay. Low, row. Okay. So, by the way, the producers begged Brew to just stick to I one. Know, but he couldn't he's do not it. not going to do it. So, can, can, I do get, it? can I give the case? <laughs> Listen, I am trying to thread the needle of how they're playing this year, plus what we know and believe about them in the postseason. And I think despite the fact that they were in the finals again last year, That's fair. Jimmy Butler, can we just show Jimmy Butler since he got to the Heat? It's the last four playoffs. So how's, uh, how's the team? Well, they have the second most playoff game, second most playoff wins. How's Jimmy? He's got the second most playoff points, second most rebounds, fourth most assists, the most steals, leads the NBA in finals appearances, leads the NBA in conference finals appearances. You want to put but Anthony Edwards all, ahead of him. That's but, all postseason. I mean, I'm kind of looking at it the regular season matters, too. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, right, which is why he's not up above Tatum. It's why he's not above Embiid. If it was all postseason, he'd be ahead of Embiid hands down. If it was all regular season, then he'd be way far, he'd be lower than even you're saying. Because it's a rich tapestry. Rich tapestry. I'm weaving. It. It's the same that. thing I was saying, like, right now, and I know you you guys scoffed at it, but I think that uh, maybe I'm, Brew, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that if we were, t- if you were told going into a series, starts next week, fully healthy, you can have for this series LeBron or Tatum. That's a real conver- argument in your head or Steph or Tatum. That is a real question to have, even though we know that Tatum right now is having the better season of those guys. Is that not a question for you? No. Uh, what? I want to root for Tatum. Oh, he turned the thought, ball over a lot. Oh, you thought, I thought you were saying I, I was disrespecting Tatum, but you were thinking I was giving him too much I think respect. He, well, look, if you, what does the guy need to do? Like, him? Yeah, get into a time machine and not turn the ball over? No, he's got to I mean, probably win the championship to get to the next he's level. He's got to win the championship. championship. The spot yeah. above him is vacant. What? Literally yeah, nobody's I, there. It's like well, being at a game. No, like, but anybody you're, sitting you're, here? Uh, you're like, going to no. teach. Like, can I sit there? No. Oh, you're why? about to teach. I can't. I want to see It's crazy. I just have teach. one full screen. Okay. I'm just about and, and one pun. Yeah. Joker is number one. The producers made me say this. Stop horsing around. Okay. <laughs> you want me to do a horse? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So I know you're like, when was Joker the most dominant in your view since we're so big on the playoffs? Last year in the playoffs. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry. Crushing, I didn't, right? Yeah, I thought you meant when, yes, Just when this dominating. Was, yes. mm-hmm. Here he is in the last 20 games. So we got playoff Joker with a little trophy here in the last 20 games that start to heat up. Basically, same points, more rebounds, more assists, same amount of turnovers, which I don't love. Uh, Field goal percentage is better, and his plus-minus is better. So when you saw Joker at the peak of his powers, 
carry the Nuggets to the championship and him winning finals MVP and even going reluctantly to the parade. In the last 20 games, he's been better. Yeah. They're undefeated post-All-Star where they decide, you know what? We should probably turn it up a little bit. Let's get the number one seed. So, Wolves are going to fall. Thunder are, 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 I think, a half game yeah, out of they, first. They, they will fall. Denver will be number one. And everyone's cons- everyone's okay. coming around. Okay. You're the last, so, so the last holdout. No, no, no. I'm not a holdout on this. But the, the Giannis part, I, I'm going to defend. Because you're talking about they're standing in the Western Conference. I don't know that they're going to finish with a better record than Milwaukee. Now, Milwaukee can't be the one because neither of them are going to finish ahead of Boston. Mm-hmm. And your point about how dominant Jokic was in last year's postseason, as great as he was, I don't think he was resoundingly more dominant when, than when Giannis won the t- title with a 50-piece to tapestry. close out yeah, the finals. Yeah, a little recency. But, what, right. And so let me give you the reason recency of this season, it might be Giannis's best season. And I'm not doing the per 36 minute stuff. I'm doing what they're doing per game. Sure. Giannis is average. He's a half point away from his career high in points. He's at his career high in assists. And he's at 62% from the field. His career high by five points. I think Giannis is having one of the most underrated or undiscussed great seasons. 31-11-6 on 61% from the field. And I know scoring's up, Brew, right. but only That's three guys in the league are averaging more than 28 points per game. Gian- Giannis, SGA, and Luka. Embiid would as well if he qualified. Yeah, okay. So it, when you have... But don't, I mean, uh, fire does Jokic have a weakness? I... I, I a like weakness. defense, he's not great, but it's not really a weakness. No, and I know I don't think you're he has any say Gian- right. Giannis, but Giannis, does. Giannis has what what, you, what Jokic is weakest at, which is defense. I agree. I don't think he's a weak. I don't yeah, think he's a weakness. Giannis might be the best in the league right. at it. True. But, but Giannis and, can't shoot. Giannis can't shoot. And he misses free throws, and he but, doesn't, he's a good playmaker for I what he is, but, but the, not close. I guess, Joker's a point he, clo- he doesn't close games. They brought Dame in to close. I, I get it, but that was, all, all of that, that was the case for Shaquille O'Neal. And there were times when Shaquille O'Neal was still the best player in the league. There was long times of it. When he couldn't shoot, he wasn't the closer, and he's still like, He's the best player in the league. I'm not trying to disrespect Jokic. I, I, I died on that hill already. I think you dunk the ball Shaq, though, at the end of the game and get you a bucket. They, you can't they, do they, that. Oh, you can't do that for Giannis. And what does he always say? We saw say? him he's, win the title. He titles. wants to give the ball to Dane. That's fine. He said it. End of the game, Guys, I want you to have the ball. He was a back-to-back MVP. He kind of ran from MVP. against Miami last year. That, playoff, he, that, you're that, right. He hasn't game. been perfect every time, but the idea... That a guy who averages damn near 30 over the last five years I'm has won two and Nick, I, I don't nope. see how you watch. And I, again, Giannis is great, but I don't see how you watch Jokic. Like, this dude does everything. Yes. He's a point so center. Does, he's averaging three more assists than Giannis. Giannis is the best but it's player just, in the league. But it's not just the average. I support the Giants if they're out on Daniel Jones. And I, I feel like I'm tied, forever tied to Daniel Jones because of my taker's remorse of saying Daniel Jones is a top 10 quarterback. I was wrong. You guys know I've said this. However, I feel like I'm tied to the demise and or the success of Daniel Jones. So I support Daniel Jones. I still support him. I want him to thrive. I just support the Giants in this decision if they decide to be out. No, no, no. no. He is tied. No, no. that's the one thing. No. Greg will be here next week. Yeah. Awful take. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't even a take. It's just That is... In times like this, you need a Mr. Consistency. That's Because right. that was, <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, my arch nemesis. Yes. What would you say? What? What are you, crazy well, I, giants? What I would have never said was what he said. Well, <laughs> I've never, I mean, uh, I don't know. But Rich eyes and fresh from a combine filled with reporting and participation said this on a show. The Giants are absolutely done with Daniel Jones, continues. The words I heard at the combine multiple times were, buyer's remorse. Yikes. We're in year uh, two of a four-year, $160 million contract, which I thought was fair. What? Uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. You sound like Greg Jenny. I don't know, $40 million? Well, it was really two years. Two years guaranteed, right? Well, yeah, yeah, two. So two but they're going to they, they I mean, get out of it. Yeah. They can get out of it. Beat after the Vikings. Their second, like, it, so after, after this coming year, they would only have $20 million of dead money. But it was so dumb. Yeah. They, you, this is what the franchise tag existed for. I Thank cannot you. believe. I agree. That this is, you have the same coach and GM. Like the Giants, are, sometimes people are like, do you guys, do you really think you know more than the t- people in the front office? I'm like, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah actually, <laughs> yes. And the fact 
that the Giants – do you know how many games Daniel Jones played healthy last year? Four. You guys had his whole career and the season four, you know what? We're not going to – we're going to franchise Saquon, ruin our relationship with him because yep. we can't franchise Daniel Jones, so we have to show our commitment. Four years, $160 million, 80-some million guaranteed. He played four healthy games last really year. Hurt. And now you're like, get him out of the building. Yeah. Get him out of the building. Same GM and head coach. What are you doing? Well, you are right there. Like, my, my reaction is, what in the world took you so long? Well, yeah. Uh, I, I, like, he's not – hold on. The year before they signed him, the year they convinced him he was worth $160 million, he threw 15 touchdowns yes. in 16 games. Yeah. He threw over 230 yards three times, including the two playoff games, twice against Minnesota and once against Detroit, which were two of the worst pass defenses in the league at That's that true. time. That's true. I mean, what in the world were they thinking? He's fast. <laughs> he can move a little bit. And he well, got, Saquon's and he, fast, and too. You should have gave him that true. a little bit of money okay. and franchise Daniel right. Jones, watched him for another year. This, I mean, luckily they, they only guaranteed him the two years and they get out of it, but this is – I it thought they got playoff fever. Ridiculous. They won a playoff game, and they were over the moon, and they thought they had their guy. But he couldn't have gone anywhere if they had a franchise tag. Well, they should have. This, yeah, of, of course. Of That's course. And Wilds, I, I say this with respect. You have horrible quarterback PTSD right now. Because of watching <laughs> Dan, oh, Mac Jones – for the last three years, pro bowler. there are – What's wrong there, with three, year, three years is, or two years? There is no – One year he was in the Pro Bowl, no, but, so you tell right. me that was a bad year but for I, me? No, but you have watched <laughs> Mac Jones, the good and the bad, for three years. <laughs> and because of that, Confident. any any quarterback that we talk about in the last two years has shown a flash of confidence, you, you're going to be up here and be like, that guy's not bad. I'd take him. He'd be fine. He'd be out of us. And so you can't – you, it's fog of war for you, buddy. You can't see it. And so – I believe in guys. I'm an optimist. We believe in Baker. Baker had – was bad with the Browns, went to Carolina, was bad with Carolina, had one moment with the Rams, and we're like, oh, that was good. And Baker was Mayfield. And then he went to the – we went to Tampa Bay, no. and we're like, oh, won a playoff game. We're like, yeah, man, you're ba- back. Bruce ba- wearing a jersey, and we all believed in him. Baker Mayfield. Won the Heisman Trophy in college. Set the rookie touchdown passing record his first year in Cleveland. The, his third year in Cleveland, the Browns won a playoff game on the road against Pittsburgh. He then was bad for a year and a half and then was good again. Daniel Jones was mediocre at Duke, was bad his first year, bad his second year. Won a playoff game. A flash game. in his third year. Won a then playoff won, game won, just like won Baker. Won a playoff game. Yeah, but Look, was, I, I think he was – his rookie year was okay. He threw 24 touchdowns, if I remember correctly. His rookie and year. He fumbled and he's had twice a, again. he was fumbleitis. Yeah. That was a problem. But he's had a ton of offensive coordinators. So I can get them thinking, oh, he had this one year under Brian Dable. He played okay. We made the playoffs, won a game. You didn't have to give him $160 million. That's what we said. You can franchise him and get another That's look. That's right. You should have. That's I what they should have. I just don't know why I don't. I, I, if I owned the Giants and I heard the Giants people who signed him to this are leaking this to Rich Eisen, I'd be furious. You, he, he's run he's played game. four games since Poorly you signed run. him. And check out our podcast if you get a chance and our YouTube channel, although Dusty told me we we're 243 million subscribers behind Mr. Beast. 242. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, subscribe. Uh, and next week, starting on Monday, it's... Per- oh! oh! Wow! I, I, I gotta be honest, I like it. Wow. I like it. First time I'm in the front. Wow. You look great. I mean, you look fantastic. That is a leading man. That, we should go with that one then. That's a good one. Officially. Congratulations. That trio. Predictions week. Uh, medals time. Uh, Jazz Wolves, the very start of the game. This is Anthony Edwards trying to check in. Uh, nope, can't do it because the game has already started. There was a rumor going around that perhaps he had some. Uh, bathroom issues. He said, no, no. Right. Just stretch. Lost track of time. That's it. Not okay. So you're giving you're giving me Anthony Edwards is my guy now no. because of this. You're off it. I mean, All right, I'll take it. Bronze medal. <laughs> I'll take it. Kobe White, 37 and 7 in a win over the Beamless Kings. No, I was recently in Sacramento or right by there. I wanted to go light the beam or see the beam, but they didn't have it up that nice, sad. That's how you're allowed to do that? 
I mean, I am. That was the Beam Ambassador cool. last year. <laughs> Silver medal, Anthony Davis, 24, 12, and 3. He mostly gets the me on the medal stand, though, for consistently bullying Wilds guy Chet Holmgren. I enjoyed that. Chet, Chet had some rough times against LeBron and AD. Gold medal, Dame. 41, 4, and 4, and a really nice win for the Bucks. Who it's one thing to know you're not going to have your best player. Another thing, right before the game, he gets scratched in a ga game against the Clippers team. Dame came through for him. There's the podium from last night Excellent. in the association. So Dame wins, Clippers lose. Three games out of first, but three teams are ahead of them. Brewer, of course, six days away from predictions week. The world wants to know, and we don't want to give away the full movie, uh -huh. but just the trailer. Any hint to whether you're riding with your Clippers? Well, look, I, I'm, I'm disappointed in my Clippers right now. They've, they've lost six of their last 11. I think they're three and four since the All-Star break or something like that. So they've been struggling, um, and I, I don't like what I see. Hmm. Oh. And I'm star I am James. What? He hadn't been the only problem, but I'm just saying it, it does make me wonder, like, Y'all, they better get it together. Uh, and those, those six losses, all the playoff level teams or yeah. play-in teams.